Hey guys, uh, in this video we're gonna go over how to operate the machine. I'm gonna go over the operating panel and also the pendant and how to use it. In this, I just wanna talk about a couple of safety things with the machine. Uh, you know, it is relatively easy to move, but uh, you should always use safety first. So there's quite a few uh, uh, moving parts on this machine and also electrical parts. So anytime that you're gonna be operating uh, the machine while the door's open, you should have safety glasses on. Um, so anytime the door's open and you're gonna move the machine or you're gonna do maintenance on the back, like greasing or anything like that, always make sure to use proper safety equipment. So. Um, if you come over here, we'll look at the screen. So you have, this is broken down kind of into five major categories and then each one is broken down into five minor categories on the right. So the first one is actually kind of the file manager and this is where when you plug in your ISO files, this is where we grab them and we can load them on. I'll go into more detail on this in later videos when we go through how to cut apart. The next one is actually where you go to build uh, the MJB files once you load an ISO file. Once again, this will become clear in future videos. This video, what we're gonna really focus on is the manual screen. So this is kind of where you get a general picture of the machine. You'll spend a lot of time here when you're not cutting parts, but when you're setting up. So the top left corner, is your coordinate system. So your part coordinate system, your cutout, and you can also switch to the machine coordinate system. So you'll use these for setting up parts um, and kind of debugging. The next one is your upper and lower injection. This is your uh, to apply high pressure jets. Once again, this is kind of used for debugging and I'll turn these on once we turn the water on. The other one controls the level of the tank here you can see the temperature of the water which we want to keep at about 70 degrees this lets you know your deionization level and uh, while we're going we want to keep that at 10. this lets you know how much wire you have left this is your panel for controlling whether the wire is cut whether the wire is feeding these are all manual controls this is the pressure of the filters which lets you know if the filter needs to be changed or not and here are some user buttons that are, are useful. So I'm gonna start going over kind of the normal operation. So the first thing that we do is actually, the first thing we do is we come over to this maintenance page. Most things on the maintenance page you will not be changing, but the first thing you do every time with this machine is you turn on both of the pumps. So now we can hear both of the pumps running and we can actually see that the pumps have turned on. Okay, so now that we know that's working, we're gonna come over to the manual uh, page and oftentimes you'll get a deionization out of range and that's fine. That's because the, the water's been sitting there stagnant and it takes a little bit to, to bring the deionization level down. So the first thing what we wanna do is we wanna fill up the tank. So this is the button that says bring the water up to the table. So you'll see that we can do that. I'm also going to turn on the light in the tank, so that's this button over here. So now we have some light. You can see that the water is up to the table. Uh, the reason why I did that before we did anything else is because when this machine moves, it actually is, uh, has seals that are lubricated by the water. So if you don't have the water up, uh, we'll wear out those seals earlier. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to take this abrasive pad, you want to wet it a little bit, and you want to gently rub down the table. What this does is it keeps the table in pristine condition and we keep everything flat. This will help keep parts accurate. Once you do that, you can take this, which is a water gun, and you can gently spray everything off and that'll get any leftover residue on there. Now, just going over some manual control of the uh, machine itself. So here we have the pendant and this allows us to move the machine around. So this will control what speed we move at. Uh, notice we can't go up to level four. We can only go up to level four when the door is closed. So here I'm gonna go to level three and I'll move in the X direction. So this is the positive X direction. This is the negative X direction, negative Y direction, positive Y direction, negative Z and positive Z. So we're gonna come down and I'll go over some other manual ones. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread the wire and we'll manually thread it by hitting this button here, the thread button. So we'll do that and you'll see that the, pro the machine is now in a program and that's the automatic threading program. So right now it's going and you'll hear the high pressure jet turn on, which will help feed the wire. So when that completes, this light will go dark um, and we will have the thread light on. So that means that the wire is threaded and we can actually see it. Uh, it might be hard to see on video, but there's actually a wire that's threaded right there. So now if we want to do the cut, we actually have to close the door. So to close the door, give it a good shove and then lock it. Now that the door is closed, I can press the cut button. And once again, the, uh, now we're in the cut program. And once it's finished, this will stay solid, meaning it's in the cut state. Okay, now that uh, it's threaded, if I hit this button, it'll just continue to thread the wire. And you see that the spool continues to spin. Uh, so that ended that. Okay, so now we'll come up, come back over here and we'll go over a couple operations over here. Um, so I think the first thing that I'll do is I will go over the operating buttons here. So the first one is MOV. And what that is doing is it's gonna take you to the part zero, zero position. So if you just hit MOV, you see that it just goes to the zero, zero. So this is a random zero, zero position. Um, and what that is, is a hotkey for the MOV, so on MDI, the MOV um, quick function. So what this is asking for is MOV, which coordinate system you want to move in. So we moved in part, and then what value you want for X and Y. So I'll go to X1, uh, Y negative 1. And all this button is, is a hot button for going to move MOV comma part comma zero or X zero Y zero. And that's all that's useful for and it's just a kind of to help you get there faster. What SDP one CP is, is this is set point one and this will come into play when we're doing part programs. But if I set point one, all this will do is, actually I'll move to a random spot, I think it'll make it more obvious. So I'll say that this is my set point one. And just to remember that my set point one is negative 0.85 in X and negative 0.77 in Y. And then if I just move to some arbitrary position and I, sit, and I hit GOP one, it'll go to my set point. So now we're back to that exact set point. And so this is very useful when we're doing part setups. We don't need to go over what SAXP is, but UVP0 is important. What this is, is if your uh, U axis is not aligned, so I just misaligned my U and V, notice that the coordinates change. If you do UVP0, it'll realign them. And this is useful because when you try and measure something or other, other ones, this will ask you to realign them and all you do is come here and press this button. And then the greasing one, I go over in the greasing tutorial. So see that if you want more information. The other hotkeys that we can go over are if I lower it, what I'm gonna do is, you have to have the door closed for this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is raise the water level to the height of the head. And so this one wouldn't allow me to do it if the door had been open because it would spill out. It also doesn't allow me to open the door, it's locked. It won't unlock until we bring it back down to the table. So now this is at the, uh, you can see that the water level has been raised. Now what we can do is we can turn on the jets. Uh, so this allows you to test what what you want the jets to be at. So what this is saying is turn on the jets to two PSI. So if I do that, it takes a little bit, but then, um, oh, sorry, they were turning on. Uh, I just don't hear them. So the reason why I don't see any pressure is there's nothing in the way. Uh, these will measure kind of when you're close to a part, how much pressure it's seeing. And since there's nothing there, uh, I don't see anything, but you do hear it turning on. You can see the water moving. This is saying I want 15 PSI coming out, so you can change this, uh, but really uh, there's nothing there right now. I'll show you how to do this when I have a part set up, so 
wa uh, watch the video after this for part setups and I'll go a little bit more into that. So the temperature is, we wanna keep it at 70 and how we control that is we come over here to the chiller. So we need to turn on the chiller uh, and we just hit this button. Uh, it'll make quite a bit of noise um, and the hit chiller will run and that is what keeps this at 70 degrees. If you uh, forget to turn on the chiller, uh, your part will actually scorch and you will more li most likely break wires. Uh, so remember when you're cutting to turn on the chiller. The other thing to watch is this deionization level. So this de deionization level needs to stay around 10. When you're cutting, it'll creep up a little bit. But for the most part, once you see it start to go to 11 or 12, then what needs to happen is we need to replace the resin that's in this tank back here. So this tank is what does the deionization and it's full with resin and once you start see it start to creep up that needs to be replaced. So uh, I'm going to lower the tank back down to the table and when you hear a click the door will open back up. That's also when this gets to zero. Um, so this is the, the manual page that we've been going over. Uh, you won't really use the parameters page but you will use the biggest one is the measure page. and so. On the measure page, uh, we have all sorts of different ways of basically finding your part. You can detect edges, uh, center points, and stuff of that nature. In the part setup uh, and part cutting video, I'll go over this in more detail, but honestly, there's a lot of information here and you can you know, do corner finding, you can do all sorts of different things. Other than that, I think the only other page that we'll use is this maintenance one a little bit, and that's to turn on the two pumps. And then the other thing is, when you change out the wire, you wanna update the remaining length to be equal to the full length, basically telling it that your wire, uh, how much wire is left, and that will be indicative of on the front page, how much wire is left. So the 13%, if I had changed that to the full amount, that would be updated to 100%, and that just kinda of keeps track of the wire. Other than that, I think that's everything, and everything else I'll cover in the next video on how to cut apart. Thanks.